Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the program today, the Monday edition. Thanks so much for joining us right now. If it's possible, reach over, get your Bible, and join me as my Bible sits open to the book of 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1, we're in the midst of a verse-by-verse study in the book, and I think that you'll want to not only have your Bible open if possible, but also get something with which you can jot some notes down. We will be giving an outline for some verses here today. We think that you get more out of the study as you put more into the study. That always seems to be the case, doesn't it? Well, yesterday I had the privilege of preaching into a local church. They are in the midst of a transition. They sold their building and are in the process of building a new one. So they are right now meeting in a school building. And uh, it's really rather fun to watch God's people who love the Word of God make adjustments to accomplish the work of doing church, doing it biblically, but doing it in some transition formats. It's amazing how that causes you and I to think about what really is a local church? What is worship? What is it components of it. It's a fun thing for us to be forced to rethink that kind of information. Well, I've got some gospel tracts I want to give to you, but let me get into the Bible study by leading in this way. Have you ever been compared to another person? Now, most of us have. I have a brother. I have two brothers. One is 15 months older than me, and he always was a natural athlete, and I was compared to him. I couldn't play baseball like him. I couldn't play basketball like him. People quickly discovered that and comparisons were made. Those comparisons, frankly, did not help my self-confidence as I was growing up. But let me change gears because one day my dad took my brother and I and he took us to Skid Row in Chicago and showed us two men. One was a drunk lying there in the gutter in his own vomit. The other man was a shopkeeper taking care of his store. My dad says, you see these two men, boys? Which one do you want to grow up to be like? Well, the the choice was not hard. The comparison was clear. I'm saying all that because today in 2 Peter chapter 1, God's word will use a comparison word. God will use it not like how my brother and I were compared based upon our personal skill set. The comparison God's word will use will be like my dad did it. It'll be a comparison of long-term outcomes. Now, today, you and I get to choose between two outcomes and then figure out for ourselves which one am I added for. To that end, join me with your Bible open, if possible, to the book of 2 Peter and chapter 1. A moment ago, I mentioned gospel tracts, and a gospel tract is simply a short written evangelism tool that lays out God's plan of salvation and does it in a beautiful way, but it's short enough that you can keep it in your pocket, have it ready to hand out, keep it in your purse, have it ready to hand out. It's such a format that people, when you hand it to them, they'll almost always readily receive it. The one in my hand right now is entitled, Are You in Danger? Are You in Danger? It was written based upon a true story of our founder. It was written, though, for young people in the older elementary, early junior high age bracket, and it's a true story when our 
found her was out in a boat fishing in the middle of the night. A thunderstorm came out. The only way he had to get to shore was by using the light from the lightning. And as this track goes on to say, was he in danger? The answer was yes. But it also asks this, was he frightened? He says, no, honestly, I wasn't frightened. And here's why, because I didn't realize the danger. And that's where this track leads. People are in danger of a Christless eternity in an awful place called hell, but they often do not know about that. This gospel track and our other tracks explain the gospel clearly. Please, please let me send you a sample packet containing one each of all of our English tracks. My announcer will give you that information at the end of the program. Please be ready for that. You can, though, go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. O-R-G. That word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S, BibleTracksInc.org. Two verses today out of 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 10 and 11 says this, Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure, for if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Stop, please, right there. I began our look at 2 Peter chapter 1 using a series of words all beginning with the letter E, like the word elephant. In all, there'll be six words for uh, the outline format here for chapter 1. Now, after the opening two introductory verses where our salvation is described, Peter wrote about enjoying, that's the E word, enjoying our salvation, enjoying the provisions of our salvation. That's verses three and four, enjoying. Then in verses five through nine, Peter here, by the direction of the Spirit of God, talks about encouraging new knowledge, encouraging new knowledge as we walk with God. But today, verses 10 and 11, my key word here, my E word is the word entering. Verses 10 and 11 talk about the caliber, the level, the quality of entrance that believers can have and ought to desire to have when they meet Christ, when they go to heaven. Now, verse 11 speaks about an abundant or a triumphant entrance into the everlasting kingdom. I'm going to use three words here that help me. going to help me unpack verses 10 and 11. All the words begin with the letter C. The three words are this, comparison, classification, and commitment. Comparison, classification, and commitment. First of all, the comparison. Verse 10 begins with these English words, wherefore, the rather. Wherefore, the rather. That word rather is the comparison word. Rather than having our Christian life end up like verse 9 talks about in our spiritual life, being blind and unable to see afar off, rather or instead of, verse 10 says, all of you endeavor or give all diligence to live in a way that accomplishes two things. Number one, to accomplish a life that we never fall. And then number two, that we have an abundant or triumphant entrance into heaven. Now, the first one, the never fall thing here, the first one deals with our present earthly walk with Jesus. The second, that abundant entrance deals with our future heavenly walk into heaven. The never fall deals with our present earthly walk with Jesus. The second, that abundant entrance deals with our future heavenly walk entering into heaven. Now, you see verse 10 there? Verse 10 ends with these words, for if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. Now, that word fall means to stumble. It's the idea of you and I doubting. If we choose to apply our 
our physical, spiritual energies into adding to our faith virtue, knowledge, self-control, endurance, and love, as verses 5 to 7 talk about. If we do that, then our day-to-day walk with Jesus, we will not be in doubting and stumbling around about whether or not we are genuinely saved or not. Now, that, friend, would be a huge blessing to a whole lot of people that are believers. But then verse 11 speaks about our future, our entrance into heaven. When the day comes when we meet Christ face to face, we will have a triumphal entrance. We can have it. Why? Because by our personal application of our spiritual energies, we have been adding to our faith virtue, knowledge, self-control, endurance, and love like verses 5 to 7 talk about. If we do that, we will have a caliber of life that's described in verse 8. We will not be barren. We will not be unfruitful. As a result, we will have earned, you hear that word, we have earned the, the reward of a triumphal entrance into heaven. Now, friend, listen, 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 listen. All, 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 all born again believers get into heaven by only one method, the grace of God the grace of God. Heaven is given as a gift to us when we receive Christ. But what's being talked about here is the reward, is the caliber of our entrance in due to our serving Christ. Rewards are earned by the power, by you and I using the power and truth of God in our day-to-day life. You and I get to be building upon our grace salvation foundation. Our salvation, your salvation, my salvation are the same. They are identical. We are saved by the grace and mercy of Christ displayed at Calvary in the empty tomb. But you and I get to build onto that foundation. We can live our lives building with gold, silver, and precious stone kind of efforts and work, or we can build using wood, hay, and stubble kinds of effort and work. Now, please, again, pay very close attention right now. The items which are labeled wood, hay, and stubble are often not sinful things. They may be, but often they're not. They are just just simply things that have no eternal value to them. What does that mean? If, if you're in the choir and you love to sing in the choir because you just want to bless people with your voice and you're doing it for your glory, then friend, your singing while you may help the worship, is not going to add any value. It's wood, hay, and stubble. On Wednesday's broadcast, Lord willing, we're going to return and look at my other two points, my other two words beginning with the letter C to help look at these two verses. Today, though, we get to confront ourselves. I don't confront you, you not me. You and I confront our own selves with a contrast. The contrast is almost, well, it's almost like as obvious as that drunk man in the shopkeeper that my dad showed me. Our contrast is to end up either spiritually blind in my Christian walk or end up spiritually abundant and productive in my walk. You may be listening today. You have a desire to go to heaven but you cannot get there because, you see, you think you have to work your way to gain an entrance. No, 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 no. The entrance into heaven is a gift, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The entrance into heaven, getting in, is by you humbling your sinful heart and saying, I need Jesus to save me. You repent of sin and you come to Christ. Do that, friend, today. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 
1-800-268-6102. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.